skinny jeans, a neon yellow off-white belt, rainbow Yeezys, and an oversized t-shirt with a pedestrian crossing printed on the back. This weird outfit, which is totally seen as ridiculous today, well, back in the day, it was the height of cool and trendy. A few years later, we saw a return to classic styles with basketball sneakers, varsity jackets, and baggy pants. Nowadays, we're going again in a totally different direction, leaning towards runner and trail styles. Yet all these seemingly diverse styles end up being worn by the same people who've been brainwashed by the same trends, changing their style every two years. This phenomenon is nothing new. In fact, it was even more pronounced back in the day. But we're starting to see real differences from what was happening in the 2000s when trends were mainly dictated by magazines, TV, movies, or celebrities. Today, the phrase, it's fashionable, doesn't mean much anymore, as if there's only one way to be stylish. In reality, everyone wants to conform, but also be different at the same time. Thanks to, or because of, social media, we now have thousands of microtrends and variations of existing fashion styles that pop up and disappear every week. Trends have lost all meaning when overnight you can switch from Balenciaga night boots to Salomon hiking shoes. So when we look at the evolution of trends in the fashion market, we have to wonder if it's still relevant to follow trends nowadays. Or if it's once again a huge scam in the world of fashion and we need to find ways to protect ourselves from the traps brands are setting for us. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Knowledge SI over here. New video, a pretty complex topic today. We need to talk about fashion trends, but mostly we're going to ask whether it's time to detach ourselves from this concept or if maybe there would be a real positive side to following trends. As consumers, you've definitely faced new trends and you've probably been brainwashed by some of them. Looking back, you might totally regret wearing certain pieces. And if that's the case, this video is perfect because we'll try to understand the workings of trends. It's a thing that's been around for centuries and as usual, we need to take a brief trip back in time for some historical context. More than 500 years ago, it was already a thing. Okay, it was reserved for the elite, like Queen Elizabeth I, Mary Antoinette, or dudes like Louis XIV, this chump who never washed in his life, but probably had the world's biggest drip back then, with unique outfits obviously made just for him by the greatest craftsmen. Creators or kings would inspire each other to eventually have more or less the same details, colors, or styles on their outfits, and we already had something very much like trends. Much later, it got really democratized through media, mainly TV, magazines, or movies with more and more fashion enthusiasts, or simply people who wanted to look like those stylish folks they saw on TV all day. It was actually the niche that ASOS started in the 2000s, since originally ASOS meant as seen on screen, and the concept was to sell outfits similar to those of your favorite stars that you saw on TV. Back then, being fashionable and trendy was way easier. All you had to do was put on your low-cut jeans and your freshest snapback, and you had it going. But the creation of fashion and trends was still quite locked down and always controlled by an elite who dictated what was stylish or not. Today, it's partly still the case, but we have a lot of underground trends emerging from nowhere, amplified by social media, and later, even inspiring big designers. Speaking of social media, we asked you on Instagram if you feel like you dress according to trends. Surprisingly, more than half of you were convinced that no. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? What's tricky about trends is that we always feel like we don't follow them and are 100% rational and responsible in our choices. The obvious truth is that having your own style outside of trends is complicated, since most stores conform to current trends and impose them on us. Every young person started wearing cargos or varsity jackets, because beyond the fact that influencers and stars brainwashed them, it's also simply what was available in stores. If right now you're hyped and want to dress in something totally not trendy like skinny Balmain biker jeans, well, you'll notice that you won't find them at H&M, Zara, or probably any mainstream store because in their agenda, they didn't plan for you to wear biker jeans today. And even if you really want them, you'll have to settle for baggy jeans with lightning prints. <sighs> Trends roll forward like a steamroller, growing day by day. We see it clearly in our stories, like with Salomon shoes becoming literally twice as popular in a few months. And now we have tons of people DMing us on Insta explaining that anyone who refuses to cop Salomons is a huge sheep brainwashed by Nike. And they, well, they're the refined dudes who have opened their third eye. The truth is obviously quite different from what they imagine. And in reality, whether it's the Travis Scott clones in cargos and Jordan 4s or the fashion diehards rocking Salomons, 
Palamon, or Asics Kiko Kostadinov. We're all sheep. We're just not in the same flock. That's why when we asked you to describe the outfit of a trendy guy today, you all had a completely different version. And it's absolutely normal. Today, there are hundreds of trends coexisting to give you the illusion of being different. On one side, you have guys dressed in Cyber Y2K, thinking they're different from the mass, wearing Boohoo Man cargos and Jordan 4s. You have guys wearing Arcturix jackets and Salamons who see the Cyber Y2K dudes as clones. You have guys brainwashed by Rick Owens, convinced they're the real different guys and that all others are victims of mainstream trends. You still have the Heady Boys dressing exactly the same since 2006, with their skinny jeans seeing the Rick Owens fan club as a bunch of bats. And it never ends. We always associate with a trend and always refer to a figure of authority, even if it's totally unintentional. And even when we want to be different from others, in the end, we just follow a slightly less mainstream trend. Honestly, if you're a big trend follower, there's no harm. It's not entirely shameful. Following trends is actually super normal for humans. It's in our nature to have gregarious behavior, man. Always doing what everyone else does, even when it seems totally nuts. The Ash experiment showed us this big time. In a classroom, they put a guy, making him think he was just taking a simple vision test. They showed him a straight line and asked which of these three other lines was the same length. The test was super easy, and when people did it alone, they never got it wrong. But when they were with seven other plants who gradually voted for the same totally wrong answer to mislead them, the test subjects ended up conforming and spouting total nonsense, voting for lines that were sometimes even five centimeters off. I just... I, I'm speechless. It's kind of the same thinking that makes us pretend to be happy with monstrous stuff at our feet, like Crocs, Bottega Veneta's puddle boots, Yeezy foam runners, Salomon's hiking shoes, and all the weird stuff that's popping right now, but was pretty shameful just a few years ago. But that's what happens once a trend is kind of caught on. Usually, the start of a trend is way less organic. It's almost always driven by brands, but still, it needs the final consumer's approval to really blow up. Brands do tons of data analysis on runway trends, past consumer data and social media to create or bring back pieces that could become, or at least try to become, the next big thing. After creating the product, they have a whole strategy to promote it, maybe collaborating with big names and visually bombarding us with loads of influencers wearing it, eventually turning a pair of shoes that were gathering dust in the back of a store into a massive hit. That's exactly what Anta did after buying Salomon and bringing models like the Salomon XT6 back, which, just a reminder, has been around since 2012 and was far from fashionable back then since it wasn't designed to be the fashion crowd's favorite. But as we explained in the video about Jordan 2, in 1986, Nike was convinced that Jordan 2 would become a lifestyle hit off the basketball courts. But that didn't go as planned and people preferred literally any other Jordan. Honestly, unless you're totally not into fashion, it's hard to avoid getting swept up by new trends, with all the cognitive biases pushing us towards sometimes questionable movements. Trends aren't fundamentally bad, though. In fact, if you love fashion, you gotta at least be aware of new trends so you don't get bored and stuck in a rut. It also opens you up to new stuff you'll end up loving and might not have noticed without the trend hype. Like, right now, lots of people are starting to wear weird clogs and will probably keep wearing them forever because they're actually pretty practical and comfortable. Nice. Let's not kid ourselves, trends are mainly great for brands and stores. There's this kind of unhealthy cycle pushing us to constantly buy more. And that's a thing that Benjamin Franklin himself was talking about three centuries ago. When you buy one nice piece, you'll definitely want the 10 others that go with it. That's maybe what you're going through right now, switching from Jordan 1 to Salomon. So unless you dress totally randomly, you'll have to swap your varsity jacket for a more technical one. And the real problem, more than chasing new trends, is the fast fashion world's offerings that make it too easy to buy your sixth jacket of the year for just a few bucks, turning what should be a long-lasting physical product into something like a monthly clothing subscription. Wow, man. Uh... Damn. Clearly, trends can be harmful and dangerous for the uninformed. Many people blindly follow influencers, trying to stand out with crazy outfits, but you gotta realize that they dress like clowns mainly for the social media stats. So it might not be super wise for you to copy their shit. Also, remember that they often get their clothes for free and are paid by brands to promote products they might not even believe in. So now that you know all this, think twice before diving headfirst into a new trend that'll probably last three weeks, especially before dropping a month's salary on a new fit you might never even wear. Yeah. 